what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the latest evolution xrom and this one is the 30th march 2022 build this is about 2 gb in size also includes the g apps and if you want to flash this rom check out the cards or the description talking about the about section it still looks kind of similar and we have the evolution x logo up top and this rom is actually based on android 12 l but here it shows android 12 also we have the evolution x version as snow 6.2.2 for Rafael and this is the official build and if you keep tapping on it you get this evolution x doodle kind of thing let me go back we have the security patch as march 5th 2022 and we have the stock kernel as the soviet star kernel then we have the build number and stuff and the linux status is enforcing in the system settings we still get a system updater and of course you can check for updates from right here whenever there is a new update it will show up right here but in the gestures, if you go into the system navigation settings, then in the settings of it, we have the swipe to invoke assistant and that is actually working fine. And let me show you the voice trigger. Okay, Google. As you can see, that is working perfectly fine. Let me try one more time. Hey, Google. As you can see again, voice trigger is not a problem in this ROM. Also, we have the left edge, right edge customization, then the amount of back height gesture kind of thing. And we have the pill length customization. So you can actually customize the pill bar's length but let me tell you there is no thickness customization as of now and here we have the advanced gestures back again we have the swipe to like swipe extended action and we have the customizations for it so you can set like a screen off or screenshot whatever things that you want to add to each customization you can do that and you can also have the vertical left l kind of swipe so yeah you can customize it thoroughly however you want to we also have the haptic feedback and the full screen gestures so if you want to hide this pill bar you can actually hide that and even in the recent panel once you go as you can see in this if i'm scrolling through the apps in the recent panel i get a haptic feedback and that's just awesome we have the two button and three button navigations of course then we have the quick tap action that is the back tap kind of thing we're gonna have it for screenshot and stuff and the quickly open camera the one-handed mode and stuff everything is working great we have the press and hold power button swipe to take screenshot and stuff everything is there and let me tell you for the swipe to screenshot you get the capture mode where it's needed and we also have the playback control the double tap and the prevent ringing option let me go back we have the front camera settings and from right here you can change the sounds of the front camera and the camera ready you can disable but there is no camera calibration option for some reason and we have the like gboard as the default keyboard over here now let me tell you i was not actually willing to make a video on this particular build because i did face some problems honestly but i was waiting for an update but the update never came I would say yes, four days before it did get a couple of updates, but after that it stopped like this is 30th March build. So you can guess right now today is 3rd April. So yeah, I would say the update situation improved, but right now on this particular build, I did not want to make a video because this build just lags sometimes. Honestly, the lags are like too much to actually bear with it. And I would say I have never seen these kind of lags in Evolution XROM, but in this particular build, I have been facing huge amount of lags sometimes, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Once the lag happens, if you reboot the device, the lag actually fixes for a couple of hours, for two to three hours, it won't appear. But again, it will appear with your usage and stuff, but then you have to reboot the device for some reason. But yeah, I haven't seen with daily usage that this much lag happens in Evolution X, but on this particular build, yes, I have faced those lags. I'm just warning you guys. So other than that, the ROM is packed with the features of like the Evolution X. You should already know that it has huge amount of features. And yes, it almost has unlimited amount of customization. One thing that I do not like over here that you don't get any kind of ANX camera or something for the Redmi K20 Pro as of now. And in all the custom ROMs, it doesn't come with ANX camera on Android 12 at least. And that's a bummer in my opinion. But here I have tried using this Gcam 8. It takes great night sight pictures. And let me actually show you, I have taken a couple of selfies, it has ample amount of details and yes, this is with the back camera and just notice how like good it looks with the selfie. This is with the rear camera again and this is with the front camera. So yeah, I would say it takes amazing quality pictures, but this is a Gcam 8. I'll link it below in the description if you want it. I have kept it in almost default settings. I haven't changed much settings. But here you can also use the Unix version of the Gcam and that actually works fine. You have the 2x telephoto lens working fine and also you have the 0.66 or the wide angle lens working perfectly fine here. 
and everything with the night sight and stuff everything should be working fine also with the gcam 8 i'll show you one thing that is very good and in the video settings if you have a bluetooth headset connected you can switch the mic of the bluetooth and that's just awesome if you're noticing so yeah if you're doing vlogs or something this gcam 8 will be a lot more helpful than other camera apps because you can switch the mics from the internal mic to the bluetooth audio so that's just awesome in this like gcam 8.4 i guess i can definitely recommend it and even the front camera and stuff everything is working great over here you shouldn't worry about those and you get all these settings with the front camera also you can install the gcam go and that is working perfectly fine no issue you also get the face retouching option and stuff so yeah the gcam go and other gcams are working perfectly great but let me tell you if you want to use a nix camera this is not the rom for you but yes you can also try flashing nix camera with magisk and stuff but on android 12 well i didn't take the like hassle to actually flash magisk and stuff now the quick setting panel still is dark and that's kind of disappointing but they did a poll on the telegram channel i guess and there are a lot of people voted for this dark theme kind of quick setting panel but yeah that's their personal preference i actually like the lighter quick setting panel because in the dark theme it's already dark if i want the dark theme i can definitely switch to the dark mode why would you like keep the dark theme just on the quick setting panel then white over here on the notification shade in the light theme i don't know i don't like this but yeah in the light theme there should have been the white kind of quick setting panel but here this is black and that's how it is but yeah it does have ample amount of quick setting panel toggles we have the always on display toggle the reboot toggle is also there the dc dimming the high brightness or the daylight kind of brightness mode is there the volume panel is there the fps info also appears over there and we have the evolver or the customization settings the google home controls then the airplane mode nearby shared the screen recorder everything is there and if you're noticing the animations are very seamless and this is because of android 12 l in the white theme the quick setting panel shows dark but once i click on it it's white and it doesn't look good the power menu still stays dark i don't get this but yeah in the dark theme this is the annoying thing over here i would say and we also have the auto brightness kind of toggle let me actually enable the do not disturb by the way in the power menu we have the advanced reboot so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here and this is the brightness panel and it works perfectly great also talking about the launcher we still have the pixel launcher over here and to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and swiping down gets rid of the quick setting panel swiping up gets rid of the app drawer and the widgets are working perfectly fine and this is how the animations looks like of the widgets they look like good enough i would say the animations are seamless and the overall ui is like pretty smooth in the settings panel we have the evolver settings and in terms of customizations this rom has a lot of customizations right now we have the black or the amulet kind of thing and we have the monet engine you can also customize that with custom colors the dark theme you can schedule it if you want to the headline and body fonts you can change and there are plethora of fonts if you're noticing also the icon packs are there and you can actually see them and i have been using it with the sam one let me go back we have the signal icon styles you can also change that if you want to then we have the other things like the wi-fi icons then the icon shape etc you can also customize those so again huge amount of customizations inside series bar we have the headset bluetooth etc icons the clock style date style etc you can enable or customize we have the vaulty icon the vo wi-fi icon and we also have the bluetooth battery status right now i'm connected to a bluetooth device just notice there is the bluetooth battery status and even in the quick setting panel it shows up right there and we have the mic and camera privacy button then we have the location privacy indicator combined signal icons is also there if you want to enable that inside notifications we have the re-ticker ambient edge lighting heads up you can also enable if you want to the show notification count option is there in call vibrations are there and here we have the quick setting panel customization and there are plethora of quick setting panel customizations again in the power menu we have all these options with the advanced reboot so you can enable it from right here then we have the gestures and from right here you have those gesture settings which is present in the system too and we have the long press power and toggle torch the double tap to like lock the screen then the double tap to wake on doors and stuff in the lock screen we get the udfp settings and let me tell you here you get amazing amount of fingerprint scanner animations and they look really really beautiful you can customize everything over here in terms of the icons plethora of icon options over here for the udfps you can use any kind of fingerprint scanner icons with any fingerprint scanner animation and it has huge amount of animations again and it won't simply like bore you with the animations you can have a different animation of the fingerprint scanner depending on your mood and that's just awesome in android 12 l2 you are getting all these customizations we have the media cover art the ripple effect then the fingerprint error vibration and stuff 
Let me go back. We have the buttons here. We have the on-screen nav bar. Then the other settings like the invert three button layouts and the power app volume control, the volume steps, click to take partial screenshot. Everything is there and we have the screen of animation changing option and the charging animation also appears. We have the misc settings. Then here we have the game space. If you want to enable that per app, you can enable that. We also have the unlimited Google photo storage, unlock FPS in games and the higher quality streams options are there. And the pulse is also there. This is the nav bar and the other pulse that you can enable in the lock screen or the ambient display. Then we have the USB configuration. I have set it to file transfer and it is really convenient for me. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. And this is the battery bar. Now, let me be clear about the battery life. The battery life has improved quite a lot, but it's not the best. But yeah, this device is already like almost two to three years old, I guess. But still, I would say the battery life here is good enough. And here I have almost 56% battery left right now, if you're noticing. But in idle condition, the battery is not that much draining. That's just awesome. And we have the battery temperature on the bottom too. But I would have loved to see the charging cycles and stuff back again, but they are not yet present. And here, let me actually show you with the Aku battery app. I have tested the battery life. And if you're here, if you scroll down, you will see I have got about seven hours and 16 minutes of screen on time. And that's awesome. And I would say seven and a half hours of screen on time almost is amazing. And the screen off or the standby time you can see and the combined use you can see. Also the battery health, if you want to see, this is my battery health right now. It's showing about 77%. And I would say it's definitely almost a lot better from the other custom ROMs. In other custom ROMs, I have seen this percentage is about 72 or something. So yeah, I would say the battery life of this ROM is great and you shouldn't be having any much issues over here. Let me tell you, I have got about 600 or 700 plus cycles on this particular battery and this is the original battery i'm using for the redmi k20 pro here talking about fast charging that is also working fine and this is how it looks like while charging and yes 18 watt or 33 watt fast charging should be working fine here this is how the volume panel looks like by the way and you can expand it just like this and we have the other things like the touch sound the touch vibration or the haptic feedback and the me sound and answer option is there we have the youth edition and stuff and let me tell you the sound quality with the headphone jack and bluetooth as well was amazing over here i have been enjoying using the bluetooth headsets also the headphones like the wired headphones and stuff they sound really good over here we also have that hi-fi audio option and the clear speaker option is also there in the sound settings and you can see all the other options in the sound settings let me scroll down we have the display right here we have the dc dimming the high brightness mode again and we have the extra dim of android 12 then if you scroll down more we have the colors and this is set to boosted right now you can control the rgb then the double tap to wake the prevent accidental wake up wake up on plug everything is there in the wallpaper and styles this is how it looks like you can change the accent color based on the like the wallpaper colors i have been using this evolution x kind of wallpaper over here it looks beautiful once you're scrolling down on the quick setting panel i would say also we have the themed icons again and then we have the grid and up to five by five grid you can choose Talking about the wallpapers, we have these Evolution X kind of wallpapers over here and these are new and they look really beautiful I would say. But yeah, this default Evolution X wallpaper looks really good. In the security settings, this is how it looks like. We have the screen lock and if you go into the settings, we have the quick unlock and stuff. Let me go back. We have the face and fingerprint lock option. Here we have the face unlock and the fingerprint and I have added two fingerprints. By the way, talking about the fingerprint scanner speed, it's amazing experience. It unlocks 100% of the time with the fingerprint scanner. And yes, it is very reliable fingerprint scanner experience overall. And it unlocks very, very fast with the UDFPS kind of thing. And I would say the fingerprint scanner is one of the fastest that I have seen on the Redmi K20 Pro on this particular build of Evolution X ROM. Now let me show you the face unlock and how it works. Well, you can set it for the swipe up or you can set it just from the lock screen. Whenever the lock screen appears, it will unlock, but I have set it to swipe up. So that's why from here, if I swipe up the screen, just like this, it will say recognizing face. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me show you one more time. And here I double tap. And if I swipe up, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time, but yes, it unlocks 100% of the time. So face unlock and fingerprint both are working great, but there is also app lock and here for the app lock, you have to go into this advanced settings in the security then go to this stock lock options. Then from here, you will get the app lock. Let me show you by unlocking this app lock settings in the product apps. You can search for any particular app and you can lock them from right here, as you can see. And I have locked apps like Telegram and over here, if I unlock it just like this, if I open, if I try to open the Telegram app, it looks like this. 
and if I tap the fingerprint scanner right now, as you can see, it unlocks. And yes, it works 100% of the time. Also, if you lock the device once you are in that app, and right now, if I try to unlock it and put my fingerprint scanner, as you can see, the app closes out. So you have to open it again and you have to reopen the whole thing. So this is how the app lock works. Auto lock timeout up to 30 minutes. And we have the collapse notification option and we have the enable biometrics for unlocking option. So that's regarding the security stuff. So overall, in terms of daily driving performance and stuff, this ROM has been good enough. But yes, whenever there is those like lags appearing, I feel like changing the ROM or something. But yeah, I would say if you can bear with those lags and you can like wait for a future update, then you can definitely flash this ROM. But otherwise, if you want to like have seamless experience, no lags, stutters whatsoever, I cannot simply recommend you this latest build of Evolution X ROM as of today. So that's how I feel. And if you want to see the performance benchmarks, here are the N22 and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular ROM build. It also passes the SafeNet test right out of the box. So banking apps are not a problem here. I have been using banking apps. Also the DRM info stays L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. And in the split screen, it also has those new Android 12 options. And if you go over here, just like this if you're noticing this is how the split screen looks like you can switch between apps just like this and you can scale them and once you go home and bring it like go to the home screen and this is how the split screen looks like and you still have those apps in grouped mode so yeah the split screen is actually working perfectly fine with this kind of like newer android 12 l so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.